So now we're going to look at item assemblies, item tracking and tracing. And the roll center or homepage that I'm using for this is called shipping and receiving. The reason I'm using it is because we can quite quickly access our items, our assembly orders and our item tracing. So for the purposes of this illustration, we've got a sales order ready set up. So we've got a customer in this instance, the School of Fine Art, saying that they want um, two of our assembled items of amazingness, as you can see from the line here is great so we don't need to do anything else with that for the time being but what I do want to do is obviously make sure that I can facilitate this order so firstly we'll have a look at the item information so you can see how the uh, assembly bill of materials is set up and where the item tracking information is set um, and then we'll go into order planning to make sure that we can purchase in the components before um, making the assembly so we're going to assembled item of amazingness first um, just to show where the assembly bill of materials lies. So we'll go into the item card, we'll then navigate down to replenishment where we can see that the system is assembly and then we'll click on the yes next to the assembly bill of materials to see exactly what makes that up. So we can see we've got two of part C and two of part D there. Okay. Within this item, I've also got a tracking mechanism set up when it goes out the door. Yeah, so before I ship, I'm going to need to be able to set um, a, an item tracking code. Now, I've set free entry just so that I can manually enter the numbers. But if we were to say either um, serial number specific tracking or serial and lot, we'd have to specify these number series so the system can automatically drop into information into the system for us. But because that's not set up for this particular trial system, we'll just stick with free entry and, and manually enter everything. Okay. Now, going into part C and part D, we can see, likewise, when we go down to item tracking, that we've got free entry, um, and then we've got our purchase mechanism and our default supplier information there as well. Okay, so to get the system to do a lot of the heavy lifting for us, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to go into order planning, um, and I'm going to get the system to tell me what I need to do off the back of the sales order. So if I go into process, calculate plan, it will bring up that order that we've got here saying that we need to um, create two um, of the assembled items of, of amazingness. So it's suggesting that we create an assembly order to facilitate this. So I'll go into process, make order, and then the one that we're paying attention to here is make assembly orders. So the system's done that. Again, going back um, and navigating to assembly orders, we can see that it's been created there. Okay. Now, the system can't plan for stock that it doesn't have until an order exists. So the fact that we now have an assembly order means that we can run the plan again and it will tell us what components we need to facilitate that particular assembly order. So we can see we've got part C and part D here. Part D doesn't, however, have um, a default supply from uh, vendor or supplier. So I'm just going to enter in that number there uh, before creating the purchase order this time. So again, I'll go into make orders, this time paying attention to create purchase orders and choosing one of the options there. Click on OK, and then that will create the purchase order for us. Excellent. So now we need to complete that purchase order just to bring the goods into stock and we'll do that whilst completing the item tracking information. So we we'll go into Worldwide Importers um, that we're ordering these parts from and before we receive or think about receiving we need to enter the item tracking codes. Okay, So we go into line, item tracking lines and this is where we're free to enter. So we've got four components coming in so we need four serial numbers. Um, so let's just do 20, 21, 22, 23 to make things easy and then I'm going to apply them to the same lot. Um, so let's do apply them to the same lot so we'll do lot y okay and then we need to select a quantity to assign to each one of these so one 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 and then one. Now, if you were just working with lot numbers or batch numbers and you weren't worried about serial numbers, that's fine. Um, you can do all of it with one line and just say my lot is lot Y and then enter the quantity of component there. So we'll close that off. It'll assign those tracking entries to the item there. And then we'll do the same for part D. Okay, so we'll do 30, 31, 32, and 33. And then lot P. totally at random. But as I say, this is using free entry, so it is a manual process. Um, but if we do have assigned serial number series um, or lot number series, then we can go into process and then assign serial and lot numbers for it to drop in automatically for us. 
which is ace. Okay. So now all we've got to do is enter um, a dummy invoice number, post, and then receive an invoice. Excellent. So I'm not going to open the invoice, but what I'm going to do is navigate to the item card so you can see where the item tracking information ends up. So let's go into part C. We then need to navigate to the history of the item and go into item tracking entries um, and we can see all of the associated information so that we can see we have had previous lots, so lot 1 and lot Z, of which we don't have any left because they've already gone out the door, um, but then we can see exactly what we've got in stock for each serial number there as well. Okay, so next step is to continue with our assembly order. So we've got the components in now, so we can go into the assembly order and then we can start making up these goods. So um, the bill of materials exists on the lines there. So because it is a simple bill of materials and we don't have any associated resource or anything like that, um, then there's not much to do. But if we do want to change anything for any reason or add in another item, or if we do want to add in a resource to say that we want to assign Mary to this for an hour, for example, we can do that. Um, so just because we've set the assembly bill of materials in the item card doesn't mean it has to stay like that. Okay, and if we want to print this off um, to go to the warehouse to facilitate that, you can print it from there as well and send it across. Okay. Of course, if the, if the warehouse are using the system, as you saw from the shipping receiving home screen, it's easy for them to go in and see all of this information if they do have access to the system. So last step then is to enter the tracking information and post. So we need to go into um, the line information for part C and then into the information there. But instead of entering manually this time, I should be able to just go into process, select entries, and it will drop in the items that it sees that we need to, to take from our inventory. So we can see those serial numbers and lot numbers. So we'll click OK to bring those in. And then we'll do the same for part D. So we'll go into item tracking lines um, and the same, select entries. OK, have those dropped in. OK, so we don't need to do anything with those parts there. What we need to do, however, is we need to go in and navigate to the item tracking lines within our order to set what we want the information to be on completion of the assembly order. So this is our identifiers that we're going to send to our customers to say, we've sent you to set of assembled goods with these serial numbers and lot numbers. OK, so we'll go into um, serial number and we'll allocate, um, let's just say, uh, 100 and then 101. Uh, lot number, let's just do my lot 10. And then my lot 10, because they're coming out of the same assembly order. And then we'll assign one there and one there. Close that off, and that will be now assigned to the header information of my assembly order. So the item tracking for the components is what we've received in, in terms of tracking information. And then the order, um, sorry, the item tracking lines within the assembly order are our identifiers for the order that we're going to ship to our customer. We do have the option of saying that if we do just want to assemble one at a time, um, we can have the overall quantity as two, but we could just assemble one and leave the remaining one on assembly order if we wanted to. But I'm just going to go ahead and post this assembly order to say that the work's been completed. So, yeah, we'll post the order. Okay. And then once again, going back into inventory, we'll say see that those component parts have come out of our inventory and then they've dropped into the finished goods um, for our assembled item there. So now all that's left to do is go back to our sales order Go into School of Fine Art, um, enter the item tracking information. So again, we'll go into related information, item tracking lines. We can then go into process and select entries for it to say what we've got out of what's just been completed. And if we click on the hyperlink, we can see exactly where that's come from. Um, click on OK, it will then bring it into the order. And then in the same way as we did with the uh, purchase order, we'll just post and ship an invoice. Excellent. So that's the process of bringing goods in with item tracking information, um, obviously using the example of a, an assembly with assembly bill of materials and then getting them out of the door. But what if we want to actually trace um, an item from, say, a customer back to, to the original component parts that we were sent? Um, we can do that by going into item tracing. OK, and I'm just going to click on um, the item. We're just going to do it by item. I'm not going to do it by anything more complex than that. So we're just going to assemble the item of amazingness, process, trace, and it will show us um, all of the associated item tracking to do with that item. So we can see lot numbers, we can see serial numbers, 
um, and a bit of a description there as well. So that's that's from usage to origin, but you can also do it the, the other way as well. Yeah, so if you're wanting to, to track a component part from a supplier um, through to, to where it went to in terms of customers and sales, um, then you can switch it to go the other way as well. To order Dynamics 365 licenses or to sign up to a 30-day free trial, navigate to d365.link forward slash now.